oil dropped a little bit on the West Texas, and you know I was kept thinking this all this whole time period, and you know I wasn't sure where the resistance point was going to be. I don't think it really works by technical resistance so much. It's just that they came out with the word, but when I saw that thing last night, I think it was on IMF saying about warning about high oil prices could jeopardize the economy. And you wonder, well, I don't wonder. When the IMF says this, you wonder, why would that make traders just get out of it? You know, it's almost like the whole market is centrally controlled in some ways, you almost think. But um, that's when I was starting to think there might be a pullback or something. But I think it's still got more room to run up a little further. I'm almost certain of that, but I don't think I'm putting any money on that because I think silver is going to be the better bet and part of that reason is cost of the euro. Now the euro has dropped a little bit and I can get into the headlines here. There's a bunch of them. Uh, you know, emerging markets regain taste for euro. I mean, you know, I, I don't really read every article there is. I skim through them because there's two. I just kind of get a consensus of what the major mindset is going on. Whereas if people are worried or are they not worried? Do they think everything's smooth sailing? And sometimes you could take an opposite view, but I don't always want to do that because I think that use a little common sense. In other words, right now, because of elections coming up, they want to make things look good. They want to make things look good. So I think things are going to be good for a little bit, for at least a couple months or something. So I'm going to be jumping into silver, and I'm hoping I'm getting this right. Um, you know, they're still talking about the Eurozone will break up. I believe that eventually, and uh, not in the next couple months, that's for sure. European stocks fell this week on investor concerns about Greece's ability to implement austerity measures needed for a second rescue package. You know, it's the same old garbage. It's like, you know, one day there's good news, it's like the weather. You know, got sunny days. What do you think is going to happen a few days from now? It's going to rain. And it rains. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to clear up. That's what's, what's going on with the euro. But um, it does give you a good for, uh, forecast as far as what's going to happen with silver and oil. And oil up to a point because uh, that is really geopolitical tensions with Iran. And there's a, that is almost like a... Like, I got my idea that I think oil is going to go way the hell up this spring. But I'm not sure. Like, I'm not thinking March 2nd like this Cliff High prediction that was out there. I don't know I don't know where he gets his information from. But I just think that's too early. It could be more like April, end of April or May. And what that's going to do is it could possibly, and I'm saying a, a serious oil spike, not even like $120 a barrel or something like that. I'm talking about... Well, over 150, you know, <clears throat> that could knock down commodities. But in the case of silver, I'm still not 100% sure because if there's such global tension going on in the world, I would think the gold is going to be up there too. And that could uh, keep silver up a lot higher. But just looking at these charts, say for instance, this is the euro, right? <clears throat> we had a hit here on December 28th. I forgot what, you know, whatever news was out. Big, you know, doom and gloom, whatever. And you can see, <clears throat> this is December 28, 2011. <clears throat> the same thing. You know, today, the high oil prices are, you know, weighing in on the economy. You know, the light bulb just went off, right? So, uh, again, uh, excuse me. Silver, same thing. A good hit on December 28th. Now, I bought physical here. And now I'm cussing myself out for not buying AGQ. I didn't know about True Believer, which was a new fund. But AGQ was a fairly new fund, even when I bought it back way back when. But, um, yeah, 20, it would be more than double. But every time, you know, this morning silver was getting hit, it was down 30 cents. And, you know, just as I kind of thought, I thought it would kind of like... Uh, Everything would be rosy for you know the time when I can actually 
open up and get into the market like around 9.30. In other words, if I was able to pull the trigger on it about 7 o'clock this morning, I would have done so. I would have done so. And I've been, and I might have done a whole pile of it and dumped a piece of it because there would have been a gain already. But, you know, I think there's like, um, there's some stuff that goes on, I think, where a lot of times these big pullbacks and dips happen in the morning before most people can do any kind of trades. Most people, you know. So, uh, but still, you know, this again is, um, you know, the silver chart. Again, it still fairly corresponds to the news that's going on in Euro, but not exactly perfectly. And I'm thinking that with the euro problems more or less resolved there's gonna be this yin and yang going on for like weeks and weeks you know though it's there's a problem here there's a problem there but then oh if everything's great it's gonna it's still silver is gonna be moving along nicely and now that I see the oil pulled back slightly it might stay around this range for a while um, I think that uh, I think that you know, oil might pull back slightly, and then it, maybe it'll go up to like 112 and pull back again. It's going to probably be in this 100-something three-digit range for a while. It's not going to shoot up to 150 a barrel or 120 a barrel or anything like that in the next couple weeks. I don't think nothing like that's going to happen until there's more tensions with Iran. Because now, you know, already know what's going on. They're going to make the adjustments, and if they have to, they're going to take... Month, they're going to take stuff out of the strategic oil reserves and pump, and that's going to bring oil back down again. The powers that be don't want oil up really high right now. I think eventually, if you're looking in the global scheme of things, and I'm just thinking for myself, I'm not thinking Lindsey Williams here, um, they're going to push oil prices up for various reasons. One, the people that produce oil want the prices high. Just like if I was selling uh, oil myself, I'd like the prices high. I'd like to have a lot of money for it on anything I sold, right? Obviously, or anybody else what they sell. So, I mean, that's a no-brainer, right? And you know, yes, you know, since Lindsey Williams knows the oil establishment or whatever in the United States, I believe they have a interest in keeping oil very high. But it's almost like anything. Um, you know, there's a fear that it can kill their business too because alternatives will be found and I believe they do stifle every type of alternative there is out there because competition on the very top of industry is actually the most vicious of anything because that's really what global wars are about and it's not really about uh, you know all the so-called cloak and dagger type conspiracy things that people think uh, I just throw an interesting take bit out there about the oil industry. I said this before, but I don't know if people heard this. Uh, an example of where um, oil was given a big impetus to be put out in the public market. Uh, it actually came from John D. Rockefeller, which obviously knows that's standard oil, and people know that. But he pulled a real shrewd maneuver. There was this women's suffrage moving out in the uh, late 19th century about banning the sale of alcohol. And, you know, it was like, you know, it causes crime, it does this, you know, it's a devil's brew, or whatever the heck it is, all these different things. So, what? but there was another angle to this. Like the early cars, they used to be able to run on gasoline and alcohol. In other words, gasoline was pumped in the cities and then when your car was driven out in the outlying areas, it was farmers that sold alcohol to the car users. And they had to do like a simple adjustment from inside the dash to the carburetor. You know, it was like a couple turns or something of some adjuster. And then it was run on alcohol, fine. But, you know, the same stuff people drink was the product, you know, from the corn or whatever it was. The same stuff people drink could also run the cars. So... That was a problem for John D. Rockefeller. So what he did was he went ahead and I think he gave, I forgot how many millions, it was millions of dollars. Back then that was like a tremendous amount of money. To push for prohibition of the sale of alcohol in the United States. He gave millions of dollars to the women's suffrage movement for one. And 
this whole prohibition amendment was basically not over you know the forefront was these moral crusaders and all this garbage but really what it was the impetus and the force behind it was John D Rockefeller because he was trying to knock out his competition to his crude oil sales gasoline so I mean you, you figure how many politicians voted for that that were hard drinkers themselves because hey you know but the thing is it would ban this it banned the uh, production of alcohol but like if you had a stash of 10 year supply you know you're fine you know that was that type of deal so I'm assuming you know the politicians they did whatever they want I mean they're probably above the law back then as they are today but um, I just wanted to point out that story because uh, you know I talk about you could be demand destruction on oil um, <laughs> I think you're dealing with a different animal in that way because it's not going to be too easy because uh, they knock out their competition any shrewd possible way they can. They're pretty, they're good. They're very tough, very tough. But um, this article goes on and says oil's recent rally stemmed from concerns about supply disruptions, primarily from Iran, which is uh, which is to be the subject of a European Union boycott and oil exports from July. And they already preempted the boycott, so what they did was they already cut off um, UK and France. So that's partly why the oil jumped. B big deal, right? Um, U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary Jimmy Geithner told uh, CBNC, CNBC that uh, the U.S. may even look into using some of its strategic oil reserves to minimize the risk posed by the reduced Iranian supplies. So they're not they don't want this oil to go up too high just yet, you know, because you know, they don't want to kill the economy. But I think overall they do want to keep it going up and up and up and I think it fits into another game plan. And I don't want to call it the elite because this stuff is right out in the open. I mean it's flat out right out in the open. They're looking for this, you know, sustainability, green earth, you know, the environment and stuff. Eventually, they want to get everybody off the oil, and also they don't want to have too much. They want to do population control and all this other stuff. So, I think that there is a policy to bring the oil prices up, not just due to shortage, but other things that are fi that are planned globally. So, I you know, I think these oil prices are going to be staying up high and high enough till. They're actually destroyed by an alternative, but I don't know what that alternative may be. For now, it might be natural gas, but I think that uh, we might see, um, you know, other things come on that, you know, the powers that be want, and one of them is the sustainability. So it kind of, the whole the pieces of the puzzle kind of fit it together. What I'm saying is that I think that this policy is probably more driven by just than money but it's also you know the sustainability policy which is probably not a good thing either because I kind of you know I read into it a lot and I think there's a lot of uh, you know it's control power same old garbage has always been but uh, nothing new in the world that can tell you that it's been that way for thousands of years but I think this oil um, it's still going to be rising but not as fast as some people think and it's probably having a slight pullback now I personally think it can go up a little higher than this eventually but you know if they're gonna start doing this stuff with possibly reducing releasing strategic oil reserves um, that'll bring it back down that'll bring it back down pretty quick now as far as silver and gold I think they're they're probably gonna move up pretty good they're still gonna move up good because just because of tensions and uncertainty and you know gold retreated a little bit but you know it's probably gonna bounce it's probably gonna bounce yeah it already is so I'm gonna get in here and I'll start buying this silver triple leverage might be the wrong timing because you know if I actually bought this if I was able to buy this you know down this morning when it was down quite a bit more um, 
I probably would dump, I'd probably buy more than I want to hold, and I would have dumped a portion of it today and secured a gain. But you know, they always do this crap. A lot of times these dips are in the morning. You'll see this in the, on the oil and all this kind of crap. It's, it's very typical. So you'd have to have special access to the markets or something to do that. And I don't know what the hell is going to involve with that, but I don't want to bother with it. But uh, I'm probably going to get in here right now, get triple leverage, and hold, 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 and let's hope that the freaking damn thing goes up really high. I think it's got a lot more to go, man. This oil, I think, is going to settle down for a while. You know, it's going to go, like, up and down a little bit. It's probably going to be, maybe, I don't know where it's going to go, but I, I don't think it's going to get much above 112 or anything like that. It's probably going to go through to 110 at one point in time, but... If it gets up any higher, they're going to reduce the strategic oil reserves. They're going to knock it down. And the euro, I don't know. I think it's probably going to bounce again. So, you know, silver. Silver, you notice that silver and euro, pretty much, there's a pretty good correspondence between the two. It's not that bad. And right now, silver was down because of concerns over the euro and, uh, you know, the effect of high oil prices on the economy. And I was wondering when that light bulb was going to come out. And I figured it would. I figured it would. So, um, and you know, just like when a euro was hit back here December 28th, the silver took a hit. Now, sometimes the euro got hit over here, too. Silver didn't take as much of a hit, but it took a hit. It's kind of like it would look like it was going back up, springing back hard. It's not a one-to-one -one correspondence, but it's, it's, uh, it's not bad. And I'm still thinking that the euro news is going to be good for some weeks. And this silver can very easily, you know, if you're looking back on it, you know, a chart going back a little further. Um, you know, it could very easily get up in this range, you know, right around here. It could very easily make the movement from here to here. Now, I'm not sure what the hell I would do, you know. If right now, obviously, I should have just bought in here and, you know, hit it hard and just held, held, held. But, you know, a little nervous about doing that. But now I'm starting to look at this stuff and I'm saying to myself, you know, if I keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting, I'm going to miss the boat. And I think this thing still got some more room to run. It may pull back and I might be seeing, you know, like, going sideways and down a little bit and it could go down at 34 for all I know I really don't know but I think in pretty soon it's gonna hit this spot now obviously if I if it gets hits 34 down here I'm selling off Sprott PSLV and I'm going into triple leverage very dangerous game very dangerous game but and I'm not trying to say I'm brave I'll maybe uh, I'm kind of doing a calculation in my head. I'm thinking this is the way it's going to go. So that's what I'm doing.